Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a MAC Cosmetics lipstick swatch video for you. I thought this would be a fantastic reference for you all just to see what these colours look like on my skin tone in one video. It's a great little reference point if you're ever wondering about a particular colour that you know I love or maybe I've talked about but you've never actually seen it on my lips. So that's why I thought I'd do that for you today. It's going to be a tough one for my lips I imagine they're going to get very parched. Um, but I'm going to be trying all these bad boys on for you so stay tuned if you want to see that. So I've divided all my lipsticks into four categories. I have my nudes, I have my pinks, I've got my sort of oranges and reds, and my sort of purples and plums. The first one I'm going to try on is Flare for Finery. This is a luster finish and it is from a limited edition collection. Uh, I think it was the Christmas collection 2013. This is my palest nude that I own. As you can see it's a very, very, very pale nude. Um, with quite a sort of pinky base. I actually use this a lot over top of a deeper lip liner and it gives this really cool kind of creamy effect to the lip colour. But, um, so yeah, it's more of a mixing colour for me. I wouldn't really wear it on its own. As you'll see, it washes me out a lot. But it is a very lovely texture to wear on the lips. As you can see, very, very pale nude. Quite a sort of pinky base to it, so it definitely suits my undertone, but it is very, very pale, so I'd either wear this with an extremely dramatic eye, just to keep all the focus on the eyes, or as I normally wear it with a sort of deeper lip liner to create a kind of ice creamy effect to the lips. It really makes like your deeper lip liners look quite creamy. Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful colour. It's very comfortable to wear because it's a lustre finish. It's not too um, drying. And yeah, I think it's really pretty. The next shade I'm going to put on for you is Angel, and I've put this into my nudes category rather than my pinks because it is still very, very, very sort of pale, soft, pinky nude, um, and I think it just works better to put it with my nudes. It could go either way. As you can see, it is that kind of soft, baby, pinky kind of nude colour, and I don't wear this one that much. I've got other colours I prefer, like MAC Syrup, but this one is very pretty, and I did go through a phase of wearing this heaps with my Chanel gloss on top. what Angel looks like on me. It is a frost finish, which is not my favourite formula from MAC, and I did buy this one without actually trying it on. It was one I bought online, and I probably, had I seen it on my face, maybe wouldn't have bought it, because it's quite a... It's, it's not pale enough like the other um, Flare for Finery to be a real like pale, stark nude, and it's not quite warm enough. It doesn't have enough depth for me, personally. But I think it's very pretty, and a lot of people do really like this colour. Um, but that's what it looks like on my skin tone, definitely throws a lot of pink. The next one I'm going to show you is Syrup, and this is definitely the one that I would pick over Angel, just because it's a little bit more mauve -y. Um, it's still a luster finish, so it still has a really beautiful shine, but it's just a little bit more um, natural looking, I think it doesn't look as sort of Barbie, um, and it can go with sort of more makeup looks, I think, so I'm going to pop this one on now. This colour is super flattering on pale skin, it just really complements it, it looks sort of like your lips but better, a little bit deeper but more mauve so it definitely lends itself to being either a winter or a summer lipstick. It's comfortable to wear on the lips, it's got a beautiful shine so you don't need to wear a gloss with it, and yeah, I just think it's really beautiful. It's definitely one of my favourites from my MAC collection. The next one I'm going to show you is Brave, and this is one of Kylie Jenner's lipsticks that she's been known to wear. Um, on top of her other like lip liners and stuff. This is a satin finish, so compared to Syrup, it's not as glossy, it's not sort of as slippery, um, but it's still very comfortable wear. It's not as sort of matte as some of my other lip colour options. This is super, super flattering. Um, again, like Syrup, it's got the same sort of mauve undertones, but um, a little more pink rather than purple, I'd say, on this one. Definitely a colour I tend to wear lip liner with. Um, I always wear my MAC Saw lip liner underneath and I just find it really makes the colour, it just makes it perfect. I don't like it as much on its own but I don't know, with a lip liner it just looks so much more sort of polished and put together. However, um, if I had to only put one on with no lip liner I would probably choose Syrup just because I feel like you can kind of lightly apply that one, almost in a gloss sense, and it looks great on its own, whereas this one I much prefer with a lip liner. But it is really pretty, very comfortable to wear, still a satin finish, which is actually one of my favourite finishes, um, and it's just, yeah, really pretty, very, very much complimentary of my pale skin tone. The next one I'm going to try is Velvet Teddy, and this again is a very popular colour um, with the sort of Kylie Jenner 
uh, lip looks that have been going around. This though is a heck of a lot more sort of tan coloured, so it's not a um, mauve in any way. It's very much sort of a nude with a lot of brown base. And at first I didn't know if I would suit this, but particularly on days when I do very warm toned makeup, um, on my eyes, on my skin, I use lots of peaches in that, this looks really beautiful. I like this actually on its own or with the lip liner, so this is one I tend to do both with. Um, it just gives it a different effect. If I'm going to do it on its own, I usually wear it, use a lip brush because I like the kind of sparse sort of amount of product you can use with a lip brush, but for today I'll just shove it on. I am hoping that it doesn't break because it is very soft. It is a matte finish, this one, but it's not drying matte, it's not one of their like super mattes, it's just their sort of standard matte finish. love this lip colour. Um, as I say, when I first got it, I wasn't 100% sure if I'd like it, but I definitely have warmed to it a lot. I really have started enjoying using warm tone makeup, even though I've got a cool undertone, it doesn't mean you have to only wear cool colours. Um, I just think it can look really beautiful with gold lids, bronzy lids, you know, peachy colours on your cheeks. Um, and I love it again with either the Saw Lip Liner by MAC or on its own with a lip brush. It tends to just give it a nicer effect when you're applying it. It's a matte as you can see, there's not a lot of shine, but it's comfortable. It's a comfortable matte. It never dries my lips out. So I actually love wearing this day to day. And it's, I probably wear it about twice to three times a week. So, you know, I do alternate my lipsticks a lot. But this is definitely one that stays in my handbag rather than in my makeup collection because I'm always sort of carrying it around with me. The last nudie sort of shade I'm going to show you is Twig by MAC. And this was one of my first kind of KJ inspired nudes. It's kind of got this sort of raisiny undertone to it. It's got a bit of pink, um, a bit of tan. It doesn't really lean either way, but it's beautiful. Um, very much an autumn or winter colour. I don't tend to wear it as much in summer because I like the slightly lighter nudes like the Brave and uh, Velvet Teddy, but this one is really lovely in the more sort of cooler times. And this one is a satin finish. So as I said before, I love wearing satins. I find them comfortable, but they've got that beautiful amount of sheen to them. Also one that looks beautiful on top of a lip liner, although it's not really necessary because it's very pigmented, I found. I think the satin lipsticks are extremely pigmented. I think they really pack a punch, but they're not drying like the mattes, so they're really good um, if you want something that's really high, high sort of opaque colour but not drying. I'd stick to the satin finishes. But it's a gorgeous colour, as you can see. It really brings out my blue eyes. That's what I really love about it. Um, it's got that lovely sort of bricky, raisiny sort of tone to it. Um, that really lends itself to the sort of autumnal sort of colours, um, warm tone makeup. You can wear cooler as well though because it's still got the sort of pinkiness. It's a very universal colour and it's actually one that I think a lot of people would really suit. Now we're going to move on to more sort of purpley colours and this lipstick is from the Alluring Aquatic Collection. It's <laughs> called Goddess of the Sea and it's very much a sort of purple. <laughs> A very sort of grape colour. Um, this is a cream sheen formula, which I don't have very many cream sheens. Not a huge fan of the formula, I find it quite slippery and a little, not very opaque, and I do like an opaque lipstick, but it is comfortable to wear. It's just not really one that I wear very often, but it is cute, and I was mostly sucked in by the packaging. Definitely think this colour is very beautiful. It's just I don't know, it's kind of got this weird undertone to it that I sort of don't tend to, I find it hard to match to certain makeup looks, but if you would think, if you would know of a great makeup look you think would suit this, then let me know in the comments below. But I think it is really beautiful, um, I just sort of don't really often reach for it because I find it a little bit hard. Other colours are so much easier just to pick up and you know they're going to look good with your makeup, but this is very much, is it a statement lip, is it wearable? sort of in between so it's a little bit odd for me but I do think it's really beautiful on my skin tone I think it looks pretty I just find it harder to match um, and the cream sheen formula as well tends to wear off really fast so it's certainly not a long wearing lip color next one I'm going to show you is Rebel by MAC which is so well loved as you can see it's about halfway gone this is a satin finish so again one of my favorite formulas because it's very pigmented it is comfortable to wear it does last quite a long time as well but it's still very comfortable to wear unlike your matte for finishes um, and I just think this is the most amazing raspberry shade. It looks a lot more purple in the tube, but when it's on, it's much more of a pinky raspberry colour. And it's so beautiful. You can wear this with a dramatic smoky eye or with a very classic, just like wing look. 
So I'll pop this on for you. This also looks really cool over MAC Night Moth Lip Pencil for a very dark vampy look. Um, it just looks really, really beautiful. Other thing I love about this colour, oh, it's just such a beautiful raspberry colour, but it looks different on everyone. I've seen it on some people and it looks so purple, and on me, it throws a lot of pink and a lot of that kind of raspberry colour, which I do prefer because I kind of like pinks on me. But um, it's the most beautiful, comfortable formula. This satin in particular with this colour is just on point. It's so comfortable to wear, it lasts ages, it leaves. When it wears off, it leaves a beautiful stain as well, so you don't get like missing lipstick in the centre of your lips. You'll still have colour, it's just going to be a little bit weaker and give you more of that stain effect. But it means I can wear it all day and not worry about having to reapply because it actually still looks fine. It just looks different. Now we're moving on to more sort of pinky colours, so I'm going to show you Girl About Town, which was one of my first ever MAC lipsticks. It's such a beautiful classic bright pink. It's not hot pink, it's more like a bright pink and... Uh, sort of almost a fuchsia colour, but it's got a really wearable sort of blue undertone, so it suits cool toned skin beautifully. Uh, it's just a classic, everyone looks good in this shade. Um, yeah, and it's comfortable to wear because it's an amplified cream formula, which amplifieds are really lovely to wear. They're kind of similar to like a satin meets a, um, yeah, they're kind of like a, a satin sort of finish, but um, a little bit more pigment even, so they're really, really kick a punch. I love this colour, I really need to wear it more. It's just one that gets a little bit hidden in my collection because I get new lipsticks and they're exciting, but this is an oldie but a goodie. It's extremely flattering on cool, cool toned skin. As I said, it's comfortable to wear. It's very, very pigmented, it lasts all day, and like Rebel, it kind of um, fades away to a stain during the day. So it's really good for sort of longevity of colour, and I don't find it bleeds either. In fact, none of these lipsticks bleed except this one here from my Alluring Aquatic Collection. This one does bleed, I forgot to mention that before. There's another reason it kind of annoys me a little bit. The next one in the queue is Pink Pigeon. Now this was a limited edition colour and then it's become permanent. It's a matte finish so it's got a very similar texture though to Velvet Teddy where it's matte but it certainly isn't drying, it's not like a retro matte um, like Ruby Woo. Uh, very very pigmented, really pretty colour, in fact so similar to Girl About Town that I don't know why I bought it. but. Actually, I got this one with Back to Mac, so that's why it was free. This one's actually probably more similar to my Kelly Yum Yum and Candy Yum Yum. Not so much Girl About Town. It is a little bit sort of less vibrant. This is very vibrant, so it's a beautiful game. All of my hot pinks are very similar, so it's comfortable to wear, doesn't bleed, uh, packs a punch of colour, looks really good on the lips. Just a tip as well, you really don't need all of these pink lipsticks. I definitely have an abundance. I won't need to buy pink lipstick for a while, but I do really love pink and I think it looks really good on my skin tone. The next one I'm going to show you is Show Orchid, which is another bright pink. This one though has quite a sort of iridescent undertone. It's got this really amazing kind of bluey iridescent -y kind of undertone, which is really hard to describe. It's very different to my other colours. It's a it's an amplified cream formula. They're a beautiful formula to wear. They're very creamy, but similar again to that sort of satin finish. They're really, really highly pigmented, so they're really comfortable. So hopefully you'll be able to see the kind of iridescent shine that this one has. It's almost got sort of that purpley bluey undertone, but very visible, like as an sort of an, an oversheen. It's, Really hard to describe. It used to be a pro lipstick. In fact, it might still be a pro lipstick, but you can buy it quite regularly around many stores. Um, I just think it's so beautiful. It's a true orchid colour with that sort of purpley base. So if you like that sort of pink rather than the very sort of red pinks or um, blue base pink, if you want a real purpley sort of pink, I would go for this one. The next colour is Candy Yum Yum, which is a classic uh, MAC lipstick. In real life, it looks very washed out on the um, camera, but on, in real life this is extremely sort of fluoro high, um, Barbie pink. This is the ultimate Barbie pink colour. This is a matte formula, however, compared to my other matte formulas, I don't feel it's quite as sort of deep in pigmentation as others. I actually prefer Kelly Yum Yum, which I'm going to show you next. It just sort of has a deep depth to it that um, this almost has a sheerness. It's really hard to describe. It's still very bright, but... Um, 
yeah, it's sort of not quite as deep. I would definitely pick Kali Yum Yum over Candy Yum Yum, but Kali Yum Yum was a limited edition, therefore, if you can't get that, then get this. I feel like this one almost has quite a chalkiness to it. It's very much blue based, um, bright, bright Barbie pink colour. Um, it's probably more suitable, like it's not as wearable as Girl About Town or anything like that. So if you want a more wearable bright pink, go for Girl About Town. This is very much like a, hey, I'm wearing bright pink lipstick, which you love that sort of thing, then you will love this. Um, I get a lot of compliments when I do wear it. I just find I like Kelly Yum Yum better than Candy Yum Yum. I'll show you that now. So this here, this is Kelly Yum Yum. And as you can see, it's actually melted a little bit, the poor wee thing. Um, but this is very similar to Candy Yum Yum. I just, this is a satin finish, which you guys know I love my satin finishes. So that's why I think I like this better. I just find the depth of color just a bit better. It's a little less chalky. Um, and I just think it goes on smoother. The color is very much similar though, like extremely similar. So you don't need both. So extremely similar in color. Um, it's got that nice sort of, bluey based bright barbie pink effect but this one is a lot more comfortable to wear on the lips than candy yum yum and i just think the saturation of color is a little bit more intense and i would definitely choose this over candy yum yum i really think they should make it a permanent line i know they won't because it was part of the osborne collection for mac and they've got candy yum yum which is so similar but i just think this is a better formula so maybe they should upgrade their candy yum yum formula this last kind of pinky color i'm going to show you actually is quite a bit of sort of peachiness to it which sort of ties in well when we're going to go into the oranges and reds it is impassioned it's very much a sort of watermelon color is the best way to describe this i'm not a huge fan of this color on me i bought it because i thought it was beautiful in the tube but i just don't really like this kind of color you can be the judge of it for yourself this is also an amplified formula though so it is a beautiful finish to wear i'm just not 100 percent sure class is a true coral pink I actually quite like it now with my blonde hair. Maybe with my lighter hair, I like it a little bit better. It is extremely comfortable to wear though, because it is that Amplify formula. It packs a lot of punch, very similar to my satins. So it is really beautiful. If you like this color on my skin tone here, then you can check it out. Right, I've just put a bit more concealer on my lips to try and get rid of some of that pink color that's now staying them. The next color I'm gonna pop on for you is Morange, which is an Amplified formula, which means again, very high pigment, feels kind of similar to the satin finish, it's not drying like matte, um, but it certainly doesn't have like a sheen or a luster to it. Um, huge, awesome colour, like this is such a fantastic colour. I barely ever wear oranges, but when I do, I pull this bad boy out. Now, I'm not huge on wearing orange lipsticks, obviously they're not going to be the, like the first sort of shade you'd think to put on my sort of cool tone skin. However, a good tip, if you're going to wear something of this sort of shade, pick a peachy blush to match it with. It kind of ties the whole look together. Things like Benefit Coralista look gorgeous. Even Nars Orgasm, it's got a sort of a pinky peachy colour. can look really beautiful with it. Just to kind of make it wearable for our skin tone. Um, also, gold and bronzes and that on the lids look beautiful. Really brings out my blue eyes, I think, the kind of contrasting colour. And I actually really love it with my new blonde hair. I'm liking a lot of these lipsticks with my new hair colour. <laughs> The next one I'm going to put on is Lady Danger. I, again, love this lipstick. It's very much a orange-based red. Um, so it's still classified for me as a red, but it's just got a really orange base. And it's such an awesome power color. Like, if you're feeling like quite down and you need like an um, uplifting lipstick, this is one to pick because it makes you feel on top of the world. This one on my camera is going crazy because it's such a bright color, but... um. As you can see, it looks stunning against paler skin. Like this really can look striking. Um, you can wear it with a simple, simple cat eye or a, quite a smoky look for something really intense for an evening. And it's very, very wearable for any skin tone. If you've got a cool undertone like me, you want to make sure you're using very sort of warm tones on your cheeks and your eyes just to tie it together a little bit. Um, and if you're warm toned skin, obviously you can do what you like. Um, it's just, I think it's really awesome. I feel very powerful wearing this lipstick. I think it's the name, Lady Danger. It's really cool. And the final lipstick I'm going to show you from my MAC collection is Ruby Woo. And this is the most gorgeous matte red colour ever. Um, apart from my Lime Crime Velveteen and Red Velvet, that is definitely just as amazing as this. Um, if you prefer a more lipstick form rather than the liquid lipstick, then get this one. 
Ruby Woo is called a retro matte. It's not just your standard matte, it's a wax based matte. So it's very, 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 very matte. Will not budge. Um, it's just quite drying though. So it's always good to put a little bit of lip balm on like sort of 10 minutes before you apply it just to prep your lips. My lips are so chapped after doing this whole video so it's not going to look the best but I'll pop it off for you anyway. see this is just the most beautiful red color for pale skin it is extremely sort of blue based so it really makes your skin look um, very very pale brings out the coolness in my skin tone um, although it looks really good on anyone I've never seen Ruby Woo look bad on someone it's just the most standard beautiful red um, oh it kind of matches my cushion behind me <laughs> um, but yeah absolutely beautiful color to wear lasts all day will dry your lips out not gonna lie but putting something like the Nivea uh, repair and protection underneath your lipstick sort of 10 minutes before just wipe off the residue before you apply it it just sort of gives your skin some moisture um, but you really can't avoid your lips feeling dry this is just not one you want to wear every day like a once a week kind of thing a max just if you wear it every day your lips do tend to dry out but oh, it's worth it look at it it's so pretty So I hope you guys enjoyed that video and found it really useful just to see those colours that you know I love and do wear a lot but all in one video next to each other gives you a chance to kind of compare them to see which sort of shade you might prefer to buy um, but also just to see whether you think it would suit your skin tone especially if you're like me I'm an NW10 at MAC so I'm a cool tone skin very 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 fair um, these colours would look beautiful on any one of that sort of spectrum even up to sort of NW20 um, Obviously some of the colours are very universal as well and will suit other skin tones but it's just nice to have a reference for a very fair skin um, since a lot of YouTubers do these swatch videos but they're often darker than me. So if you did enjoy this and found it useful don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps me out, gets my video a little bit more exposure here on YouTube to grow my channel. Make sure you also subscribe as well because I do make weekly videos and I'd love to have part of my family here on YouTube. And until next time I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I'll see you then. Bye!